When the Starship's second launch has faded into the past, all SpaceX needs to do is forge ahead. By 2024, the anticipation builds for the next five Starship launches. What's truly exciting is that Starship's maiden payload to orbit will be part of this upcoming fleet. If successful, this will mark the beginning of a new era for a revolutionary transport vehicle capable of dominating the global orbital payload market. So, what is Starship's first payload to orbit? How Starship gradually reshaping the launch market? Find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. 2023 is coming to an end. And it's time to recap what has been achieved and outline new plans for the future. In early December, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, tweeted, SpaceX is tracking to launch over 80% of all Earth payload to orbit this year, accompanied by a chart showing that SpaceX is on track to put 1,600 tons of payload into orbit, representing 80% of the world's space cargo, while the rest of the world will only transport about 400 tons, and that's mainly from China. This is truly a commendable feat for SpaceX as they have exceeded their expectations and maintained their leading position in the aerospace industry. It's also important to note that these calculations do not include the payload capacity of Starship, as SpaceX has not yet launched it into orbit. However, to be honest, Starship will soon succeed and likely replace everything that Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy can currently do, if not more. It's not an exaggeration to say that with Starship in the future, SpaceX will be a dominant force in the global aerospace industry, handling all cargo and human transportation flights with massive payloads and quantities. Although it has never flown into orbit, Starship has had valuable contracts to carry the first satellites. In 2022, Japanese satellite operator SkyPerfect JSAT announced that it selected SpaceX's Starship rocket to launch its Superbird 9 satellite into a GTO as early as 2027. It isn't the first time that SpaceX or another company has floated the possibility of using Starship to launch paying customer satellites, but SkyPerfect JSAT appears to have become the first customer to sign a firm contract to do so. In March 2022, an executive of mobile-friendly internet constellation startup AST Space Mobile said that it had secured two launch contracts from SpaceX for its operational Bluebird satellites, but it only firmly selected Falcon 9 for one. In 2019, SpaceX President and COO Gwen Shotwell suggested that Starship could be used to launch Turkey's second domestically built communications satellite, although her offhand mention has yet to translate into any official agreement. In 2021, SpaceX bid Starship to launch NASA's tiny Tropics weather satellite constellation, amounting to just 56 kilograms for a price somewhere between $9 million and $20 million. Starship doesn't have any space flights under its belt yet, but SpaceX is working to change that. The company's gearing up for the third test mission of the Starship vehicle next year. Perhaps after the third flight, we'll witness the inaugural payload-carrying missions. Besides satellite contracts, one cannot overlook human spaceflight missions, including the prospect of returning to the moon. After proving its reliability, the giant spacecraft will begin undertaking crewed missions. Since 2018, the Dear Moon Project, an ambitious plan for a lunar flyby no earlier in 2023, has been announced. The ARP Project and Lunar Tourism Mission were conceived and sponsored by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maozawa. It will utilize SpaceX's Starship for a private orbital space flight around the moon. For this mission, Starship will only need to carry nine people, although its capacity could be many times that of a six-day lunar circumnavigation. Besides, there is the Polaris Project, the third mission organized by commercial astronaut Jared Isaacman, which will use Starship as their spacecraft for space travel. And when talking about lunar exploration, we certainly can't ignore NASA's Artemis III mission, with a variant of Starship HLS set to land humans on the lunar surface in 2025. The next goal, much farther than landing on the moon, it will be a journey to Mars. Until now, both the public and those involved in space travel have envisioned this as the exploration of a few astronauts on a cramped spacecraft. However, for Starship, it will enable explorations akin to those familiar in space imaginations. Although SpaceX currently has no commercial contracts for Mars missions, the successful execution of lunar missions by Starship will undoubtedly pave the way for Mars exploration. Starship flights carrying the first humans to Mars are optimally planned for the Mars launch window after the launch of the first two or more uncrewed Starship vehicles. Therefore, upon human arrival to Mars, 
there will already be at least two cargo starships on the surface. The second wave of missions can include two starships carrying crew plus additional uncrewed cargo starships. The human starships will have an order of 1,100 cubic meters forward space, most of which will be pressurized for a human habitation, a 20, 30, an 800 cubic meter LOX tank, and a 600 cubic meter methane tank with a stainless steel primary architecture. The LOX and methane tanks could later become pressurized, living space on the surface of Mars. We recommend that these first crewed starships have at least about 10 to 20 total people on board with an additional 100 metric tons of available cargo mass per starship. Cargo carried on these flights will necessarily include additional equipment required for human health and productivity during the transit to Mars and on a Martian surface. These vehicles will also carry fully operational hardware needed to support the human Mars base, which is likely to include equipment for power production, water extraction, pre-prepared landing pads, radiation shielding, dust control equipment, and exterior shields for humans and equipment. Humans will likely live on Starship for the first few years on Mars until additional habitats are constructed, so the radiation risk must be assessed and mitigated accordingly and equipment planned to support this initial infrastructure. The first wave of uncrewed Starship vehicles can also be relocated or repurposed as needed to support the people on the surface. These vehicles will be valuable assets for storage, habitation, and as a source of refined metals and components. Not only that Starship is currently regarded as a major factor that could change the entire global launch market. Starship has a standardized payload capacity, helping to reduce costs across most transport segments. With a 150-ton payload to orbit at a million dollars a launch, Musk has suggested that Starship could deliver payloads to orbit for as little as $10 a kilogram depending on the vehicle's flight rate and how much of the savings SpaceX passes on to customers. In comparison, SpaceX's Starship, with full reusability, could potentially be priced similarly to SpaceX's Falcon at around $67 million initially, but with a higher launch rate, the cost would decrease even further. It has the potential to launch more payloads and more crew members at a lower price than any other launch vehicle that has ever existed said Laura Forzik, executive director of the space industry consulting firm Astrolytical. Furthermore, with its 9-meter wide fairings and virtually unlimited payload capacity, handling large and cumbersome satellite designs will no longer be a challenge. Historically, almost every application in space has been constrained by something commonly known as swap, size, weight, and power. Satellite bus manufacturers have been forced to use expensive, lightweight components that are specifically designed for spacecraft that need to fit inside current rockets. A perfect example of this is the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. In order to fit the required mission capabilities within swap constraints, the designers of JWST had to develop a highly complex deployable segmented mirror to fit within the volume budget. Use expensive and novel beryllium mirrors to fit within the mass budget and design lower power instruments and thermal conditioning hardware to fit within the power budget. This kind of complexity dramatically increases the cost of missions. In a world with Starship, things will become significantly simpler. Instead of a complex, unfolding, segmented mirror, you could use a large monolithic mirror. Instead of expensive beryllium mirrors, you could use simpler and cheaper materials with lower stiffness to mass ratios, similar to those used in ground-based telescopes. Instead of expensive, power-optimized instruments, additional power could be used to make simpler and cheaper instruments with more robust thermal conditioning capabilities. The potential for change exists across every type of mission in space. It will become possible to have a satellite bus platform that has more power, more payload volume, and more payload mass but one that comes in at the cost of a small satellite. In a world with launch vehicles like Starship, satellite-based communications providers will be able to use the increased power to have greater throughput, remote sensing players will be able to use more volume to have larger apertures, and national security missions will no longer need to make the trade-offs between single exquisite satellites and constellations of low-capability small satellites. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.